hey, I think one of the most interesting projects that I've ever created is a basic old-fashioned zoetrope, which has been updated to work with a new uh, electronic system rather than the old slits and bearings and things that the old-fashioned zoetropes used to use. Now, there have been a few different places that have done this lately to great effect. I saw one at Disneyland, which was absolutely magnificent at California Adventures. If you ever want to see a large, just beautifully done zoetrope, it'll absolutely blow you away, and I'm sure that a lot of you have already seen that. But you can do that on a miniature level. This is one of the ultimate ways to do three-dimensional animation, true three-dimensional animation, and to make something which is clearly, clearly static and not alive suddenly go into a spooky and amazing, amazing motion right in front of you. The method for doing it is actually fairly simple. So for our zoetrope, we need a spinning platform for the surface. Now the way that was accomplished is I simply cut a piece of particle board out in a circle, and around the circle I measured exactly 16 perfectly even spaces all the way around it, each of these spaces to feature whatever object, and copies of whatever object, that we'd like to animate. Now, you can have any number of spaces that you'd like. It'll just depend on what frame rate you'd like to use for your animation. And uh, in this case, 16 fit well with the wheel. And I think that I can slow the animation down to about 15 frames a second and still have a smooth and attractive animation. So we're going to find out when we give this a whirl in just a little bit. The other thing I did for an initial animation test you might want to try, and I did this before when I was doing a little bit of experimenting, but after segmenting each, uh, each area off, I got some dots from the stationery store. And the dots here I've positioned uh, in an animation sequence. So the first dot starts off uh, right up near the top of the line. The next one goes a little higher. The next one goes a little higher. And they go all the way until they're above the line. And then they, each one goes a quarter inch lower on the line until as we work our way around here, it'll work its way all the way down to a point where it's nearly at the edge of the circle. So what should happen is when our disc starts spinning and our strobe starts illuminating each segment, uh, the dots should seem to freeze in place and they should seem to slide in an animated fashion up and down the markings here that I have on the edge of the disc. So if we see dots bouncing up and down rather than whirling, we know that we've adjusted our strobe properly and our disc is ready to animate something a little bit more complex. So for rotating the disc, there's nothing more to that than an electric motor. Now in this case, I think this is the motor off a little cart. It's just a little DC gear reduction motor. You're going to find that probably, depending on the size of your disc again, you're going to want to be able to vary your motor speed between about 25 RPM, something like that, and maybe as much as 40 RPM, Dep just depending on the resolution, what you're doing, how many spaces you've got. So putting a speed control on it and, and aiming for an animation in that range is ideal. The motor itself uh, doesn't have to be DC. You could use a large AC motor if you wanted to, but keep in mind that uh, depending on what you want to animate, there can be a lot of inertia on this, and once it's in motion, <laughs> this, this uh, really needs a, a heavy axle and a strong motor. So a wheel from a cart actually serves just about perfectly, and I will set this back in place. Now the base of this that everything rests on right here uh, is nothing more than a tabletop, and they sell ready-made tabletops at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's, and uh, they're only about six or eight dollars. They're thick, they're made out of pine, a coat of primer, and you've got a beautiful, beautiful wheel that's ready to turn. Oh, on this side as well, you can probably see right here, I've got a metal bracket. That supports a pickup. I've got right there a uh, reed switch, which senses a magnet, and then at each segment all the way around the wheel here, I've buried inside the wood a little magnet. So each time a segment passes over the reed switch, it'll trigger the strobe. That way we don't have to have a strobe which is timed and the timing changes. It's actually going to be right on the mark each time it goes around. And that's where I discovered something really interesting. The first thing I tried to do was to use a regular neon strobe, and that works beautifully. But when the strobe has a very short burst duration, you'll have either a dimming of your animation because you've got so much darkness related to how much light you have, or you can get a kind of a strobey kind of a, of a jittery kind of an effect. Both of those are adequate, and they would work absolutely great for demonstrating the effect, but I thought we might be able to do a little bit better. So I went ahead and got one of those super bright LED flashlights, and I simply wired it so that each time the read switch is triggered, it lights the LED flashlight. And at that point, I discovered something else I'd really like to pass along, and that is if your LED flashlight flashes a little bit long in duration, you'll get a blurring of the animation. Still will look pretty good but a blurring. So too short isn't good, 
Uh, a little longer isn't great, but it's pretty good, and too long is, is not ideal at all. So the solution for a perfect animation is what I call a focus tool. It's just my own term, so you can call it whatever you like, but it's simply a, 40, a 4013 chip that I've rigged as a one-shot. So uh, you might, if you uh, have a friend that is good at electronics or you're good at electronics, you might want to put together a one-shot. It doesn't necessarily have to be a 4013, but I'll include this schematic. And with this, I can adjust the duration of each burst of light. And it's the most fascinating thing because when you put it on the animation and you're watching the animation start up, you adjust the potentiometer and you adjust the burst rate to fit the RPM of the wheel. Only takes a few seconds and you'll actually see whatever object you're animating come into focus. That's why I called it a focus tool. Very interesting, really exciting, and very, very bizarre when you see the effect of a bunch of clearly static models all of a sudden coming to life. Now you don't have to use magnetic read switches. You could also use an optical sensor. That would work very well. Or you could even use a metal conductive plates and have some brushes on the other side that trigger the strobe. But I just thought the magnets were the slickest and I've had absolutely perfect luck in my pre-run tests. So as we get to the big test now, we'll find out just how well everything worked. So let's go ahead. I'll put the other three bolts in the wheel. We'll hook it up. We'll test our dots first. And then I got a couple of things at the 99 cent store just to see how bigger objects animate. And if you ever get a chance to see the Zotrope at uh, California Adventures, that is definitely the nicest one I've ever seen. There's a lot of YouTube videos of it where you can check it out. And if you happen to be a modeler or a sculptor, or if you have a very poseable uh, a larger doll or object, you should be able to do one of the most incredible and bizarre looking animations that you've ever seen. When a static object on a spinning platter freezes suddenly and comes to life. So give it a whirl and let's spin this one up and see if, see if I got this one right. <laughs> 